heroic efforts, life does not turn out the way we'd like it to. The story is not a recreation. It's a ride along with the crew of Bay Flight Medical Helicopter in St. Petersburg, Florida, where every day they face the harsh realities of life and death emergencies. 450. Spring of Fire and Rescue, up there 25. Well, yes, there's a bad accident out in front of Forest Oaks Care Center on Forest Oaks Boulevard. Okay. Do you know how many how many vehicles? I think there's two, but there's one, another one out there. I don't know whether he's just stopped to help or what. Okay, ma'am. So head on. Okay, ma'am. I'll go ahead and send him out there, okay? Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Spring on Central Rescue 2, engine 2 at Station 4, DC-1, respond automobile accident. The accident is more than a two-hour drive from the nearest trauma center, so paramedics at the scene request a Bay Flight medical helicopter. Bay Flight, we have an 18-year-old male that was involved in a head-on. Steering wheel is deformed. Major laceration right side of face involving the cheek down to the lower chin. Uh, possible head injury, multiple lacerations and avulsions. Within 17 minutes of the call, the chopper arrives. The chief flight nurse on board is Maurice Brazil. I'd like to have you sat down in between the pumper and the ambulance. Okay. As we're beginning our descent into the area, we noticed the fronts of both of those cars were completely smashed in, like an accordion. And heavy damage to that Continental. Okay, you can open your door now. We knew that there could be significant injury because of the velocity that caused that kind of damage. A local Spring Hill fire rescue paramedic, Bob Cox, had arrived 40 minutes before the chopper. When I reached the first car, the woman who was in the front seat just had a small bruise on her arm. The airbag had inflated and, and helped her. The next car I found, 18-year-old white male sitting in the front seat of the automobile. He did not have his seatbelt on. He had a large laceration on the right side of his face. And he was losing a lot of blood. Consciousness at this time, he is awake, alert, unoriented, uh, with retrograde amnesia. Uh, he's got a major laceration on the right side with arterial bleeding. Imagine a patient who's in a helicopter and there's blood everywhere. You're having weird sensations and you can't move, you can't talk. You don't know what's going on, you're totally confused. But one thing you can notice is there's somebody there with you and somebody to calm you and work with you through it. We have an ETA 11 minutes. We're in the process of clamping the artery at this time. Copy that, 1751. Oh, I found that artery. It was pumping like crazy. Here, I got both of them clamped off. Eighteen-year-old Jeff Deligio is admitted to Bayfront Medical Center, where he's examined by trauma surgeon Stephen Epstein. What happened to you? I don't know. He did not remember the accident, and that is evidence of a cerebral concussion, and that can easily lead to uh, bleeding in the brain. Jeff is immediately sent for a CAT scan. Head only. Okay. Try and hold really still, okay? And take some pictures of your head. Even if both cars are going at 30 miles per hour, the combined rate of speed in a head-on collision is 60 miles an hour. Most people will wind up with bleeding internal injuries. Jeff's family is notified. You okay? Hey, buddy. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come in. I'm sorry. Did you meet Dr. Harris? Okay? This is Dr. Harris. Dr. Harris is a plastic surgeon. We went so into good. the emergency room and the poor kid, <laughs> I saw his eyes. And that's all I think I saw. I saw his eyes. I felt so sorry for him. When we continue. I said, I wish it was me, not him. He's only 18 years old. Gonna be it. You're gonna be okay. Don't. Okay. Yeah. Just relax. Just relax. You're not dead. Yeah. You're gonna be fine. 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 You
out here for you. Everybody's thinking of you. Why don't we go outside so that we can get him upstairs? Okay. Though the CAT scan reveals no brain damage, Jeff must be taken up to surgery to try and repair his face. All right. 6.24 p.m. Can you send an ambulance down here, Holy Court? What's your address? What's the address here, hon? 6728. Okay, when they accidentally went into the house and hit his wife with the car, he apparently slipped in the gas and then... Okay, I'll get him right there. Please do. All right, bye. Be advised the vehicle is inside the home, has struck a person. Yes. As soon as local rescue units get to the scene, they call for a medical helicopter. Okay, yeah, right where they're standing at, they said... At the scene, Northport Fire and Rescue, including EMT Howard Bierce, is already working on the 82-year-old woman. Judge Cody. Let's go. All right, all right. Yeah, I As we were bringing her down the steps, she was grasping onto my arm and looked up at me and said, this is the way I don't want to die. The next thing I knew, I was trying to get life back into her with CPR. Look at them bagger. We got a number eight right here. We can't get it too much. What happened? The action. The car, the pedal slipped on me. I foot slipped off the pedal and I hit her into the steps. When we got the first look at the patient, we could tell that she had a crushing injury to the chest. We knew that that was going to be very difficult to get any kind of an airway on this lady. Okay, let me have the two. Let's go, two, two. Okay, somebody's got checked on the bag. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's getting tough. The bag. It's getting hard. She wasn't having difficulty breathing initially. It's I'm not sure CPR about this. Let's check it out. Uh, we're using conventional methods that weren't working, so we had to do what we call a cricothyrotomy into the neck and put a tube in. She's got so much edema in there, I can't even palpate with my finger. That's it. Right here, I got it. Suction it out. Right. Uh, go ahead and give three back. more epis. Right three more epis. Ready? Go. 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 Uh, they had pulses back and they did have some respirations. There was a feeling of, of joy there. Right now, the patient uh, is in the uh, normal sinus uh, to uh, ir irregular heart rates. Counts uh, for probably about eight or ten. In route, it was like a roller coaster ride. We'd get a good response from her heart, like it's Anna saying, I'm still with you and I'm still coming, you know, and then all of a sudden, <sighs> she's going to full arrest again and just back and forth, and it's a vicious cycle. By the time they arrive at the trauma center, rescuers have already been working for more than an hour to try to save the life of the 82-year-old victim. She's got every drug on board. Everything. No matter how hard you work on this type of patient, the outcome is not usually very good. Keep going. Okay, we'll go 15 minutes from here. Everybody's energies are focused in on that patient. We pull everything in we can to try to save that patient's life. Hold on. Got another time, Tom? Uh, I'm yes. Pulse. The time has been about 16 minutes since she's been here. I don't have nothing about that. Uh, mm -hmm. I haven't got anything with the doctor. Okay, okay. okay. just pause. At 8.20 p.m., the woman is pronounced dead. Sometimes we even see ourselves or we see our family in that stretcher, and it affects us a lot. You become a part of that patient, and now that patient's gone out of your life. That's it. My name is Mark. I'm one of the chaplains here at Bayfront. Yeah. What, There's a kind of a quiver yeah. that uh, yeah. Yeah. happens yeah. just for a moment as I realize that I have a very difficult assignment ahead of me, and it doesn't get any easier. Anna died. Died? Yeah. My God. She died. Oh, no. Oh, God. Oh. Oh, my. Oh. I'm so sorry. 
Anna's pain was over, but Kenneth is just starting to experience a pain that he will have to live with for a long time. He's just beginning to say goodbye to someone who's been a part of his life for longer than many of us have even been alive. The other thing that you need to decide about Get is it. if you think Anna would want to be a cornea or an eye donor. Oh, well, she wouldn't mind that. I mean, it's just like That'd myself. That'd be all right with her? Yeah, it was all right with her and all right with me. She says if they can help somebody else, she's happy to any time. We can always give. And Anna has given somebody the chance to have vision and hopefully vision of happiness through her, through her death. A day after 18-year-old Jeff Deligio's accident, he is already well on the way to recovery. Hi, Jeff. Hi, I guess I am pretty lucky. A lot of people lose their lives because they don't wear their seatbelts, and it is very important that you, that you do wear your seatbelts and watch how you drive. You look in the mirror yet? Yeah. Dr. Harris did a great job. Yeah. Big difference. It is from day and night. No. It is a miracle that he is still with us today. According to the doctors, he came close to losing his life. And... Uh, Bay flight made a big difference, and I'm thankful for them. You're talking about going to the prom? When is that? Oh, what's next weekend? Next weekend? All my friends, you know, that showed up at the hospital, and I said, you know, I mean, I go to the prom, that I had a few cuts on my face. They said, you know, who cares? Go anyway. Everybody has a senior prom once, and that's it. It's time just to be with your friends and not have to worry about anything else. Real big smile, one, two, three. The classmates of Jeff and his girlfriend, Patty Perez, crowned them king and queen of the prom that night. He didn't think he was going to be able to go to the prom, and I didn't want to go without him. Now it's here, and it's just something I want to remember for the rest of my life and keep with me always. There's a little bit of hero in everybody, I suppose. The people that flew him over, the people that stitched him up, and himself. He's the biggest hero of all because he dealt with it, and he's fine. 